Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Energy Central Power Perspectives podcast, the show that brings leading minds to discuss the latest challenges and trends transforming and modernizing the energy systems and the utility industry of the future. And a quick thank you to Scott Madden, our sponsor of today's show. Now, let's talk energy. I'm Matt Chester, Energy Central's community manager and host of today's podcast, coming to you from Orlando, Florida. The past decade has no doubt been landscape shifting for EVs, with the market evolving from just being extremely pricey Teslas rarely seen, typically the plaything of the wealthy, to today where nearly all major automakers either have an electric model or are coming out with one shortly, and prices are getting ever more affordable for households across the country. While this shift is clearly a win for the automakers, the utility companies still have much planning and preparations to do. Once EV ownership reaches the pivot point it's expected to in the coming years, we're looking at the largest single expansion to the electricity demand in the history of the power sector. More generation will be needed, additional transmission infrastructure will be necessary, and the utility companies will need to think through all sorts of brand new issues. How to efficiently deploy charging infrastructure, what sort of incentives can help spread out the load from charging as best as possible, and how rate structures will need to be refined for this new status quo. Joining me today to highlight the important work being done in this area is Kevin Hernandez, partner at Scott Madden. Kevin co-leads Scott Madden's community of practice on the grid edge, and over the past decade, he's used his expertise to assist energy industry clients in thinking through the challenges associated with grid transformation, energy storage, and most importantly for our conversation today, transportation electrification. This is actually Kevin's second appearance on the Power Perspectives podcast, having previously appeared in episode 54, Preparing Utilities for the EV Revolution. That episode was one of the more popular ones of 2021, and we weren't able to dive into all of the important topics on utility EV programs, so it was only appropriate to have Kevin back so we could dive in deeper. Kevin Hernandez, welcome to today's episode of the Energy Central Power Perspectives podcast. Hey, thanks, Matt. It's a real pleasure to be back with you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We're thrilled to have you again. And so, Kevin, why don't you set the stage for us here? We're talking about utility EV programs, but why do utilities need to have such programs? And in general, what do they look like? Well, hey, Matt. So thanks very much. You know, So what we've seen over the last couple of years and, and really accelerating over the past 12 months has been this development of utility EV programs you know, really across the country. And to begin, these were driven by you know, one-off regulatory requirements or pilot projects. But as regulators and state governments have established clean energy goals, most of those, or many of them at least, are including transportation electrification in those goals. And more and more utilities are needing to develop internal programs and teams internally to manage the EV integration. So as a result, there's just been this wide range and types of programs being undertaken and driven by just a variety of different approaches that are really happening at the state level. Regardless of the directions those are taking, eventually EV adoption is going to require all the utilities to plan on EVs on their systems in, in some way or another. And, and for some, that may mean taking proactive action to drive EV adoption among their customers. For others, it might just be more about ensuring that EV charge is not going to impact the grid in some way. In either case, it's important for utilities to begin developing plans and programs now, thinking ahead for how they'll manage those EVs on their systems. So we have some utilities and some regions that are certainly further ahead than others in preparing for this EV revolution. For a power provider who's starting from scratch right at the beginning, though, what are the questions that you recommend they need to be asking before diving in? Well, I'm really glad you've asked that question because I think it's easy for utilities to look to some of the big, well-publicized programs and say, you know, that doesn't apply to me. In most cases, it doesn't, right? We tend to look at some of these big, well-known programs that are out there, particularly some of the West Coast and others, as best in class. But what might be best in class for a program like that and maybe an urban West Coast utility wouldn't be a terrible idea for a rural Midwestern co-op, for instance. So the first question that we encourage our clients to think through is, what do you want your program to do? What do you want to get out of it? Having a clear vision of what you want your EV program to achieve is really central to developing initiatives that deliver those desired results. So it sounds like, yeah, you you can't just copy and paste from another power provider who's done it first, but, you know, what can you learn from the implementation of other utilities that have done it first, where you can, you know, maybe mold it and customize it to be more specific to that new utility's needs? 
Yeah, I think that's an important point to make. You know, we would definitely encourage and advocate utilities to look at their peers, for examples of what works and what doesn't work. And it's really important that EV programs be designed to fit the customer makeup and service area of each territory. But for instance, utility whose service territory is largely rural may have a large portion of customers who live in a single family homes maybe or with off-street parking. Those EV programs are gonna look a lot different than those with more urban service territories with maybe higher numbers of customers living in multi-unit dwellings such as apartment buildings and probably without off-street parking. So there are a lot of great programs out there and there's a lot of really interesting ideas to pull from. We encourage our clients to do that, to take part in industry groups, to coordinate with peers, get lessons learned. Ultimately, however, in developing programs that are accomplished each individual utility's goals, we want those utilities to pull from those, those examples, but tailor those to the customer makeup and to the service territory that is their own. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense from the industry perspective, but I, I'm sure the, the regulatory landscape factors into all this as well. So how do utilities need to be looking at policy, whether on the local, state, or even federal level? Well, yeah, absolutely right. Uh, regulatory landscape always factors in. You're absolutely right. And you know, one of the reasons we see such a variation in EV programs across the country is just for that reason, because of the different approaches that are being taken by states and regulators with regards to EVs. Uh, in some, uh, regulators have made it clear that they really want utilities driving EV adoption. And they do that through outreach education programs and, and incentives and and other types of things to do, you know, maybe drive public charging infrastructure and other things. However, other states have been a little more guarded and a little more reserved in driving EV growth, and particularly with regards to the utility's role there. The approach taken by the regulators then, you know, is really key for determining not only what programs to pursue, but from a utility perspective, also how big should the program be? What size should it be? Who should it serve? And how can those program costs be recovered importantly? So as we've talked about before, you know, when we spoke last time, one of the real challenges with building out charging infrastructure is the question of, you know, who pays for that. And in some areas, it's going to be more accepted that EVs and EV charging infrastructure you know, kind of represents a big public benefit. And, and there may be more permissible to pass those costs on to a larger group of customers. But in others, there's some real trepidation to funding commercial charging or, or system upgrades with rate payer dollars. So I think we really have to take into account, just as you mentioned, you know, that, that regulator's perspective and the context, the regulatory framework and environment in which the utilities are operating. Absolutely. And, and many of the considerations that we mentioned at the top of this conversation for utilities who are leaning into EVs for the first time, they're, they're kind of familiar. Things like rate structures, infrastructure development, uh, things like that, that have always been a part of the utility landscape but others are going to be brand new. For example, utilities never had to really worry about commute times of their customers. What are some of the key new types of data that utilities should be thinking about now? And, and how do successful programs start that gathering process for the very first time? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. I think, obviously, many utilities are looking at EV adoption rates as a primary metric for how they should build their programs. And I think there's some pros and cons to that. You know, first, you know, rates of adoption are for the most part low across much of the U.S. And so you have to, you know, take that for what it's worth. You know, however, that doesn't really necessarily mean that there are, is going to be low adoption in the future. And so I think there's a potential we may be losing something of a burning platform, you know, when we look at low adoption rates today rather than in the future. But we also may not be seeing the potential for fleet adoption, which is, as you and I have talked about before, is something we think, you know, really not enough attention is being paid to. So understanding where EV adoption rates are today, but also modeling those and looking at those from a different, different perspectives in the future is, is important. Beyond EV adoption rates though, having an understanding of just where on a utilities electric delivery system impacts of EV charging might, you know, under those different levels of adoption might have some impacts is another area where utilities can begin to have some understanding and, and start to gather that data. And depending on their system, it may uncover need to begin thinking about well, how is EV load you know, built into our system planning and our capital planning process and into our system forecasts? Other data points that are really interesting to me are you know, really focused around the customer. You know, and you mentioned it with you know, uh, driving distances and commute times. And it's those types of things that are you know, really not traditional, you know, not traditional utility customer uh, relationship there that are really going to drive a lot of what customers need and what utilities can provide in terms of these programs. You know, for instance, for a utility whose goal is to drive EV adoption among its customers, you know, understanding trends and attitudes are really important. 
understanding how EVs might affect customer behavior, such like such as you mentioned, you know, those commute times or the you know the amount of time customers spend traveling, you know, within the service territory. Whether there are people coming into the service territory from other utilities, you know, like we see in some commuting situations. So a lot of interesting things there that are unique and different are important to start to get a, a bit of a handle on. Excellent. And we've talked also a lot about how to engage with the outside aspects of the utilities, the customers, the equipment installed. But what about internally? Since many utilities, I presume, don't really have any sort of electric transportation department, you know, a longstanding one. How should leaders look at establishing these programs for the first time? Yeah, thanks, Matt. I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things we hear consistently from customers is that the number one thing utilities can do to facilitate EV growth and, and EV integration is to have a dedicated EV team in place to interfe- interface between customers and you know, the technical experts within the utility. And recognizing not every utility is going to be able to staff a you know, two dozen people to manage these kinds of processes, but even having a single person who can be the EV point of contact or the person that customers go to for EV questions, and even people within the company go to with those EV questions is important. As utilities begin to develop, you know, more robust EV programs and are charged with implementing incentives or, or other regulatory mandates, you know, having that team in place to manage those programs within the organization is really becomes critical. Uh, we've talked about before, how um, you know electric transportation, at least in our view, you know may become a new class of electric customer. And I think having people in place and having a team that's familiar with the needs of those customers and the, the some of the differences between those customers and traditional uh, commercial customers and traditional residential customers is going to be important. So Kevin, I, I know a lot of your answers on the questions we've discussed come from firsthand experience in how Scott Madden has developed their model and use it to help implement EV programs at your utility partners. Can you share what the process looks like when a utility first approaches you and your team about helping get their EV program off the ground? Yeah, sure, Matt. You know, as you, as you might have guessed from our conversation, one of the first things we want to know is whether or not the utility has a good sense of what it hopes to accomplish with the program. And even for companies that believe they know what that is and maybe have some ideas, we find it's really useful to have some early conversations with leadership and other stakeholders inside the utility to clearly articulate what its EV program, its EV goals and objectives would be. And oftentimes, you know, what we found is that seeing those on paper and getting that kind of internal stakeholder buy-in, you know, causes the organization to kind of reevaluate and say, is this really what we want to do? And what's unique about our approach is that it's focused on identifying those strategic goals and outcomes early and those things that the utility really wishes to pursue and then developing the plans to accomplish those goals, given the context in which the utility operates. So rather than taking a, you know, a you know, list of programs that you know, may exist elsewhere or a, a maturity model you know, that grades utilities on how evolved it is, our approach first asks you know, whether or not the company, you know, has those clearly defined goals, and then are those goals tailored to the service territory and to the customer makeup, you know, of that company? The next thing we like to do, so we have a we have established our kind of future vision. So the next thing we like to do is then establish the context. And what I mean by that is, we want to use data to paint a picture of of what the utility's customer makeup and the service territory characteristics you know, those driving patterns we talked about, needs and behaviors, you know, EV adoption, growth projections. We want to get an understanding of those things to establish a, you know, really a common set of facts that we can use to build those programs from. So then what we have is a vision of where we want to go, a common starting point for everyone in the company. And it's very easy then for us to help build a set of programs and initiatives that get utilities from that point A, that's current state where we are today, to where we want to go in the future. Excellent. That's, that's really helpful to hear. And so let's end the conversation with something actionable for our utility listeners. To that decision maker at a utility who is inevitably listening in and they feel that maybe their organization is behind the curve on setting up their EV programs, what advice do you have for them? What's step one they should take from here? You know, well, really, I think it's two things. And I'll kind of be a little bit repetitive here, but you know, look at your strategic EV objectives. What are they well defined? Are they well understood throughout the organization? How are they driven by regulatory mandates or state goals? 
you know, will those strategic objectives change over time or how will they change? You know, what will cause them to change? And then second, it's about understanding that context. And again, these needs that customers may have from a transportation perspective may be different than some of the needs that we're used to serving. And what are the EV project, what are EV adoption projections expected to be over maybe the next five or 10 years? And, you know, how are those different maybe than what we're seeing from those, you know, national trends or national models? And what are the things that will move the needle for customers uh, within the service territory, within a specific customer group? And then ultimately, you know, how is EV charging going to impact the utility and impact the utility's ability to, to meet its customer needs? So, you know, those are the important questions to ask because I really think that they form the basis for everything that comes after. And, and really, this is a case that, you know, doing some of the work up front in preparation and understanding, you know, where you want to go, where you're starting from, lays the groundwork for all that comes afterwards. Add one last thing here, and that, you know, a successful EV program, at least in our view, is not going to be the one that copies, you know, the, the programs that you, you know, may have been uh, in the news or may have read about or copy some other goals, but it's really going to be the one that's tailored to each utility's service territory and to the customer makeup that utility serves. Doing that and starting with those clear goals, I think, is a, a is key to success. Well, Kevin, this is once again a really informative and eye-opening conversation. We're happy to have you as one of Energy Central's go-to gurus for all things about utility EV programs. And with this sector evolving so quickly, perhaps we should just go ahead and pencil you in for uh, another check-in in an episode in 2023. But for now, thank you so much for your insights. And we look forward to you and our community members keeping these important conversations going at energycentral.com. So thank you so much, Kevin. Well, well, thank you, Matt. And again, it's been a real pleasure and I always appreciate the opportunity to, to have these conversations with you. Absolutely. And you can always reach Kevin through the Energy Central platform where he welcomes your questions and comments. And we also want to give a shout out of thanks to the podcast sponsor that made this episode possible. So thanks to Scott Madden. Scott Madden is a management consulting firm serving clients across the energy utility ecosystem. Areas of focus include transmission and distribution, the grid edge, generation, energy markets, rates and regulations, corporate sustainability, and corporate services. The firm helps clients develop and implement strategies, improve critical operations, reorganize departments and entire companies, and implement myriad initiatives. Once again, I'm your host, Matt Chester. Plug in and stay fully charged in the discussion by hopping into the community at energycentral.com. And see you next time at the Energy Central Power Perspectives Podcast.